Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Planet Zoo. We are here in Arcadia and things are looking pretty nice. You will see just to our left here, I've started doing the basic rock work around the large body of water surrounding the whole of Old Town. Now this has taken a bit of time and has been a considerable drain on our finances so I had to stop short but the basics are there and I'm going to continue doing this off cam as the zoo starts to develop and we start making a little bit more money. But today we're going to be doing a dual red fox habitat where we have this uh, main building here that I've already put in place for the staff and either side of it there's going to be two nice fox habitats that are going to be fairly similar but that's going to allow us to do like a breeding program where we can have two separate fox families that are trading babies and stuff like that and then continuing that bloodline. So let's dive into our speed build and I will talk a little bit more as we go on. So I wanted to continue this nice fence that we built for the Schwalski's horses in the last episode and just run that all the way along to the side just so that we've got some continuity in our barrier design. I don't think it's uh, an, a good touch to have so many different barriers working together when you're doing this sort of thing. It just breaks up that immersion so much that it becomes a little bit of an issue for me and I find it quite hard to look at, especially when you consider that these are just basic things that don't really draw the eye too much in the habitat itself. What's really going to draw the eye is the design of the habitats themselves and making sure that there's nice visual spaces for the guests to look through and see them. Next, we're going to decorate this staff building a little bit, and I wanted to bring these European bridge arch wood panels back in that we used right at the beginning when we built our train station, and I thought these would be a nice like front facade for the actual building itself, and I did use these on the inside of the building, you will see me doing that as well, but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them in, I may take them out and leave the exposed breeze block uh, pat like pattern in there. What I did want to do though is put some little panels of the European stonework in there so it looks like there's a little bit more of a rear foundation and I think they contrast really well with the woodwork so you'll see that this is very similar to the train station that we have right at the entrance to Arcadia itself. There is going to be some development going on there as well. Uh, I'm having a little bit of an issue with the train station at the moment where every time I load my game, the trains seem to bug out and never leave the station, which is causing a huge financial drain on us because the guests just seem to be stuck in the queue and it is a very long queue. So there's no movement through the zoo. It might mean that we need to abandon this train idea and just have a nice long path going to the middle of Old Town, which kind of messes up the entire design of the zoo. But I am going to keep trying and looking at like various ways to do this and see if I can keep that going for as long as possible because at the moment there's absolutely nothing in between Old Town and the entrance of the zoo so it's a long walk where there's nothing going on and my plan originally was to start backfilling that space with some new habitats and things but it's not looking like that's going to be possible in the uh, short term so <laughs> I was hoping that would be a long-term goal but it's not going to work out that way anyway back to the build we're using these African wood post because I think they add a nice like it's a bit of a stark contrast between the uh, natural looking lighter wood of the building itself so we're pulling these all the way across and they're going to form the framework to our new like aviary for the red foxes where they're going to be sleeping and you know pretty much that's it I want them to be quite bare so that the uh, natural environment surrounding the habitat itself is the main focus of it Obviously, guests aren't really going to be able to see inside the aviaries because they're quite set back. So we're going to try and draw the eye as much as possible in the foliage work that we're doing later on in the video. And just moving stuff around here and getting our interiors into position. And as you can see here, it does look a little bit overkill, I would suggest. Uh, so it might be a bit too much in here. So that may change later on, but I'm pretty happy with how it's looking at the moment. And we will just leave it in for the sake of this video. I did use the uh, conservation wood flooring as well and I think that might be what's causing the issues here where it's not looking amazing on the eye so we may need to change that for some just basic wood flooring but I'm not really too bothered about it at the moment it's looking pretty good and shaping up really nicely so what I did want to do was stick these out and form like a little L bracket for the whole um, building itself and run these posts all the way along matching them up nicely so we've got a continuing pattern going all the way around the building itself we're not going to put too much of an emphasis on the roof here it's just going to be quite basic and flat again and I'm going to attach some of my old solar panels, fake solar panels, I will say, and like an air conduct or something up there just to give it a little bit of character. 
And the reason why I'm not doing a lot of foliage on these is uh, I want these to be the new buildings that we've put in place deliberately. Where Old Town itself, we allowed the ivy to grow and everything and that's just been kind of maybe trimmed back so it wasn't so overgrown. Over here, these are brand new. They've been put in place when we've been developing the zoo. So that's my kind of law reasoning for not going overkill on the foliage here. Because I think we've done a lot of that and it would be nice to move slightly away from that and have some nice clean finished buildings. Using the East Asia water spas here to decorate our aviary. I keep calling it an aviary, but it's more just like a, a little enclosure. It still kind of counts, but <laughs> I had guinea pigs when I was younger and they had like a huge outdoor um, run, we used to call it, uh, that they shared with rabbits. And this is pretty much reminding me of that. So I wouldn't really say it was an aviary for guinea pigs. That's more something that you have for birds, I guess. But feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me what this is called, because I have no idea. <laughs> and we came in with some mesh work, but here I wanted this to be entirely covered in mesh and it wasn't working because obviously we can't get the angles right on this without considerable overlap, which kind of kills it for me. Uh, so we left those blank. I'm not imagining the foxes are going to be able to climb up there. <laughs> Although, if you have seen any of the uh, Save a Fox videos, they're pretty good climbers, <laughs> I might add. And anyway, I did think about filling it in with some more wood, but as you can see here, it's not working, so we just left it. The next step was to make a little doorway for our foxes and our staff to be able to get out and access the rest of this habitat for cleanup purposes and things like that. I did originally put like two bars on the uh, the actual doorway, but it ended up being too short and the staff couldn't actually get out and into the habitat, so I do remove them later on. The habitat itself is shaping up real nice though, and I'm pretty happy with how things are looking. Uh, it was a really nice, again, I'm really enjoying doing the outdoor builds at the moment, and they're just giving me a lot more inspiration. Doing those smaller builds within Old Town was really nice, and it kind of gave me the feel for it, but to be out here doing these more open plan builds is a lot of fun for me, and I'm enjoying it, and luckily I'm being able to uh, have my like keeper huts and everything close by, because that was one of the things that's always caused my builds and my zoos, especially in hard mode on franchise, to uh, fail and run into like masses of debt, has been not having like my, my staff have far too far to walk to get to a habitat to uh, look after the animals and things. Anyway, we're just finishing off the basic mesh framework for this timber frame where our foxes are going to sleep and we're pulling this across. I could have used the burrows, but I quite like the idea that these foxes have this kind of sanctuary. Very much again, like I did my tribute to the Save a Fox Foundation. Uh, do check them out. I'll put a link in the description. They're really fun and the foxes are super like personable. They've got really, really like defined personalities and I absolutely love them and they've their videos are so wholesome and I love watching them. So if you are a fan of like animals in general, they're worth looking into because they do a lot of good work and uh, they're a really nice charity and they, they all seem like lovely people with lovely foxes who have a lot of passion for their work. Anyway, back to this. Uh, this is not like the stuff you will see at the Save a Fox Foundation, but in my previous video when I built the uh, Arctic Fox Sanctuary, I do a little nod to the uh, shelters that they have. But this shelter is looking pretty good and almost finished. The next thing to do was to flip it round and obviously I moved the door because at the moment now it is facing out into the little stream there. So we're going to shift that across, put it right at the front and here we are left with this. I was going to do something a little bit different but I decided to just run the fence all the way up to here anyway because it just seemed like the uh, sensible thing to do and I don't really see the point in doing something that's too over the top when it's literally just a little barrier that is guiding staff only into this area because we've got the staff path there which we are going to cover up with some faux rocks. I just wanted to rotate these posts so that they were slightly jutting inwards and then we put down some nice flooring. I had a little bit of a play around here but nothing was really working. It was all sinking down far too much for me and even when I did this I didn't realise that the uh, the terrain was a little bit uneven so the path was cutting through at various points and it didn't quite work. Which is why we landed on the faux rock. Now I did try some of the standard rocks that we have but again the textures were clipping a little bit too much for my liking. Tried again with some natural paths and because it's a staff path we don't have a lot of options in them. It would be really nice if in a future update we got some better staff paths because you can cut off your guests from certain areas of the zoo but they all look like this which means you're forced into these weird unnatural looking path decisions 
just to hide what is, in my opinion, a very garish looking staff path. So we changed all of that around, put down these faux rocks. It's not perfect and I could maybe put in some leaves or something just to really finish that off. But for now, this is looking pretty good. I do plan to, in the future, before we do like a nice full tour of how we're looking so far, finish off a lot of like basic decoration and rock work and things like that. I could do that uh, as an episode if people would like to see me do all of those minuscule little detailing works, but I think we do a lot of that in these episodes themselves. It is a bit dark, but you need to see me doing this, just checking the barrier sizes and making sure that the foxes can't escape because we had an issue where they clearly, as you could see there, could swim across and get onto the train tracks, which we definitely don't want. But it was all okay in the end. Uh, you can see we're building at night time, but we go back to daytime because this isn't great to watch. I did uh, duplicate this barrier from the Shawalski's horse habitat and we carry that on all the way through to that main body of water where Old Town is. I just really like these grids. I think they look cool. We could maybe put in a couple of like bits of foliage that are trapped in there just to give it a little bit of extra flair. You can see I've also hidden a water purifier in there as well. That was part of the like initial design that you saw in the previous episode, but I did a little bit of jiggery pokery with the barriers and stuff just to make sure that everything fit in nicely. We run this rock work all the way down to the end of this fox habitat because I am going to be doing it on the next one, but I like to do things in a step-by-step -step process. So we're back to daylight, and I wanted to give this a little bit of extra flair using the classic pieces. So we put down some of these vents, which I think are really cool for buildings, but I also think they look like really nice little signifiers for the end of these barriers here. I could have put them on the original one right at the top there, but I decided that that wasn't really necessary. And then we put down some of these big brass plinths, recolored these vents, and everything's looking really good. And that does continue on to the next part of the habitat, but like I said, we're just focusing on this one for now, and then we'll show you the remaining part of the, well, the second fox habitat. So putting in our basic enrichments and stuff, I have done quite a bit of research on the red foxes already, so that's not too bad. And we've got a lot of stuff for them to play with and to give them that enrichment, bearing in mind that on hard mode, your animals do get bored of the enrichment items. And I don't know if that means you just need to put more in or periodically swap them over and refresh them with new ones, but we'll see how that goes when we do some more management because lately I've not had a lot of time to do that. It's just been a case of, letting things kind of flow while I've been making a little bit of money here and there and selling off some exhibit animals to recoup the losses. We have been getting a considerable number of guest complaints and stuff in and I would like to spend a little bit of time like addressing that and making sure that we're not hemorrhaging so much cash but a lot of it is down to the failings of the train at the moment because the guests are in the queue but while they're in the queue they're getting unhappy and then they're asking for refunds which isn't great and the problem is if I close I know what would work would be closing down the train station and reopening it when I do that I get a mass refund coming in and the guests don't always go back and spend that money again to get on the train station uh, get on at the train because they are often so unhappy that they leave the zoo demanding a refund for their admission price as well so it's it's a bit of a disastrous circle to be in Back over here, our basic foliage, as usual, we're using the cornflowers here as a like major part of the decoration, as well as brambles and the bracken, and uh, that's hawthorn bushes that we've lined the uh, back part of the habitat with. Coming in with some meadow buttercups again, I want this to be quite a nice colourful habitat because this is where we're starting to draw the eyes of our guests, so we're putting in a lot of different colourful flowering meadow plants and stuff like that with some unique signifiers where the trees are. And then we're going to do some terrain painting. I did cover this in all grass, but it turns out that long grass isn't a great uh, move for the air foxes. They like things a little bit more bare, as you can see there. They're not quite happy with the amount of long grass. So we're going to come in and make some dirt pathways through the flowers and stuff that we've got down here and just finish it all off. Now, what we can do is we can put in some drin grass. So that does come in later on in the episode where we can make the whole thing stand out a little bit more and play around with all of the textures that we have available to us with our different foliage. I feel like I've talked a lot, so I'm just gonna leave things for a little bit and let you watch all of this build unfold as we are doing our next portion.
Moving on now to our second Red Fox enclosure, we're just continuing the rock work all the way along the little stream here and obviously you can see we're going to have to adjust some barriers. So I did bring up the little structure that we've created here and then started working on adjusting the barrier. Now this was a little bit fiddly, so I'm not going to show you all of the issues that I was having, but basically the, uh, <laughs> the barrier wasn't playing ball because it was so close to the uh, train itself and I had to make a few like really intricate adjustments to make sure that I could get the water back in. Obviously you can see here we're going around and just making sure that the barrier is not inside the habitat itself. We did have a couple of issues when I ran the simulation and uh, the foxes escaped despite being in the confines of the barrier. But you can see there where I had some difficulty in getting the water back into place and it's because of a tiny little gap that you can just about see when we move the camera around right at the bottom there where water could actually go through and we just need to adjust that and make sure that our glass isn't actually poking through i did hope and i i initially thought the water level was going to be the same as old town itself so you can see here we're doing the little bits of terrain adjustment just to fill in that little hole there and painting it the same color as like basic rock work then we can get our water in and working nicely unfortunately the water level is not the same height and in this stream it's a little bit higher than the water surrounding old town itself so we've had to make a little bit of an adjustment there and i did put in a couple of like water featurettes to make it look like the water is pouring through this area and it also hides the glass a little bit better you will see that in action in the tour though i didn't want to include me playing around with water and stuff in the episode itself because you've seen me do quite a little bit of that in the previous builds we will come back to it though when we're doing something a little bit more elaborate and i want to create something that looks really stellar i just think something small like this is not worth showing we adjusted some of this brass work because you can see here we've got a little bit exposure where we're looking at these areas here and i wanted to fill in that and not make it look like it was just floating in midair so we made those adjustments duplicated it across so that there was parity on either side and it's looking really nice and i think it adds a nice little touch to this part of the uh, village as well the village the uh, build as well <laughs> um, next up i just wanted to duplicate these foliage pieces and bring them across i didn't want to spend too much time working on little different like bits and pieces and i really like the foliage placement that we've got here so i did mix it up a little bit by duplicating various different parts of them and placing them in different areas of the habitat so that there was enough difference between the two habitats i obviously don't want this to be too similar so we do need to be careful with where we're putting these things and just making sure that there's enough about it to make it look different from the opposite habitat it doesn't need to be too different and remembering back when i was doing the northlands video we did just put in a couple of different uh, like play things for the foxes in that build this one heavily soil based not a lot of greenery in here as well so that's a nice little texture difference when people are coming in and having a look at it and it also it's a bit easier on the eye when you are looking at it yourself inside of these spaces where they're going to be sleeping i haven't put too much in just a couple of little uh, like beds for them and some small enrichment items uh, because the main thing like i've already said is to draw the eye into this part of the zoo where you're going to be seeing the foxes playing and running around in their natural environment the roof very basic we just went with some of the arctic wood textures here i do like this it may change and then we just filled in the corners put a flat top on it and that's where i'm going to be putting my ventilation ducts i might change this to something a little bit more standout ish maybe some dark wood paneling or something like that or maybe we could even go with a, a plastic roof and change the color so that it's black put in some lighting all the way around this staff area now i do want to put some lighting in throughout old town and again that's going to come with our little adjustments and stuff that we're doing to really finish this area off before we do a tour now in here i wanted to make this pretty storage heavy so we stacked up a couple of cardboard crates and then just made a nice little scene in this area one of the things i'm trying to be careful about doing is having repeating stuff in all of my staff areas i think it's nice to have different things and different approaches to how you design the interior of these rooms but the more i look at it the more i dislike the flooring in here so i think that may have to change uh it's just it, there's too much like it's too beige should i say uh, like with the uh, white panelling on the walls and stuff and then brown boring floor it would be nice to have something a little bit different in here maybe we'll swap it for some dark wood panelling or something like that 
So because this is quite a large area, I wanted to put in quite a little bit of storage. So there's plenty for things to like build up in here. Lots of like crates and boxes and stuff stored up here. And I have seen a couple of community workshop items that I think are really nice and would probably fit in here that are mainly like little storage shelves that are metal. And I could make them myself, but at the moment in putting out of the like one video a week, I'm not having a lot of time to do a great deal of detailing work, which is why the old town stuff took place over a number of episodes where we put in the base layer and then built it up gradually over time. Here, because I'm doing habitat design and stuff, it's uh, it's taking a lot longer for me to do these sort of builds, but also at the same time, you're not actually going to see a lot of this. The main draw for the animals and stuff for the for the guests in Planet Zoo and for like looking at them themselves is you don't have a look in all of these interior item uh, like locations unless there's a specific thing like you've got an animal that has this interior location yeah this is all just background fluff so it's not really that much of an issue if they're not too well decorated but i always like to put in some detail i really like the idea of doing these extremely detailed builds within franchise mode especially hard mode as well because why not why not have that challenge where your budget is going from habitat to habitat and trying to squeeze as much as you can out of it and the places look amazing i'll just say that our guests never complain about something looking boring, so <laughs> we must be doing something right. Even just down to these little touches like putting a trowel in a flower basket. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did try and flesh out the area on the floor here by putting in some decals, but again, it wasn't really working. So I think when you get to the tour, you're going to see a different floor in here because it's not amazing. And I think we can do better with this. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with how this area looks and we're going to move on to our roof now so we're putting in some tv screens here and i have my solar panel image already saved so we just load that up and it looks like the building has some nice solar panels on the top of it now this obviously is going to cost us money because the tvs cost to run every month so we need to be aware of that when we're doing this sort of thing i tried like putting a couple of fancy designs and stuff on the roof itself but couldn't really settle on anything i even had the idea to put some moss or grass on the top so it looked like this was a naturally like sustainable healthy green space but it didn't work and I wasn't too happy with the outcome anyway. I then thought about putting these fence posts in so I could continue using these brass um, signage things from the New World pack, but again, not working for me. And we settled on ventilation ducts because we can actually wrap these around real nice and they drop down into the roof itself when you have that curved one. It actually curves down into the space and we can then attach and run a nice ventilation system all the way around the interior of the building itself. So we lined that all up, got it nicely placed, and then we had our ventilation system that runs in and out of the building coming out at the end of the roof there. Put in a couple more ventilation things and we were looking pretty good. And I'm very actually surprisingly pleased with how that all turned out. But our habitat is really taking shape now and we just needed to put in a couple of areas to try and draw the guests' eyes. Rather than them hanging around on that corner there, I want them to come to this space here and look through the mesh that we're going to put in so that there's a nice viewing area for our guests rather than having them stack up on that corner trying to look over the habitat barrier itself. They get a lovely little viewing area where hopefully the foxes will come up to the uh, mesh itself and they'll get nice up close and personal with our new animals. We are almost finished and ready for the tour, so I'm going to take this final opportunity to say once again, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate your time today. If I've done enough to earn your subscription, if you are brand new to the channel, please do click that button and that bell. I do a lot of videos, mainly Planet Zoo, but there are a lot of other things as well coming on the channel. At the moment, we're playing Two Point Campus, uh, just doing a little bit of a playthrough for the entire career mode on that. I also did some challenge modes a few weeks back. And if you are looking to purchase anything, I would love your support by clicking my humble affiliate link, which is going to be down in the description. I had a lot of fun with this build today, and I'm really looking forward to the tour. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.